Hello, Andy here from Outside Xbox, and I'm here to preview Sunset Overdrive, the new game from Ratchet & Clank, Spyro, and Resistance Studio Insomniac Games. Basics first, Sunset Overdrive is a third-person shooter set in a future where a tainted energy drink has caused the majority of the population to mutate into monsters known as the OD. Sometimes I wonder why fate chose me to live when they all die. <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm not a dumbass! The idea is that it plays like a cross between a normal run-and-gun third-person shooter and a line-based trick attack game like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Sunset City, the game's setting, is crisscrossed with high wires, rails, ledges and advertising hoardings that you can grind along, and you can also wall run, zip line, and flip off anything that looks vaguely flip-offable. You'll need to as well, there's not really any cover so sticking to the ground and running around is a surefire way to get demolished by the hordes of zombie-like OD'd. <laughs> The only way to survive is by jumping, grinding, tricking, and generally showing off as much as possible. Not only will it make you a harder target, you'll also earn style bonuses that can boost your effectiveness in combat. It certainly brings new meaning to the phrase on-rail shooter. All this place needs is a hero, one who doesn't just survive, but does it with style. On paper, I love the idea of Sunset Overdrive. I'm a huge Tony Hawk's Pro Skater fan, and joining that mechanic with the inventive shooting that Insomniac is known for seems like a no-brainer. But having played it, I'm worried that the traversal will feel kind of sluggish, especially if you're used to the fast-paced grinds and transitions of the Tony Hawk games. I get that this is primarily a shooter, and if you want to be able to actually hit things, you can't be travelling at 75 miles per hour. I spoke to the game's community lead, James Stevenson, to find out how they'd gone about trying to balance this at Insomniac. That was like the hardest part of probably the game, was getting traversal and combat to work together, and um... When we did, it was like you know light bulb moment. And Tony Hawk with guns has been a comparison we've heard. Jet grind radio. We wanted to be fluid. Like this is not a game where you're cowering behind cover or slowly moving down a street or backing up a street trying to aim at enemies. This is a game where you go right at them. You go up and over them. You go around. You're strafing. You're serpentining in and through and out. You're changing weapons on the fly. Like it's all about being kind of fast-paced action. You know, build that style level up. We want you to look cool while you play and do really cool things while you're doing it. You get a little bit of extra leeway when you're grinding just because of the speed of movement. You know, if enemies are running and you're grinding, it gets really hard to uh, aim precisely and so it wasn't as much about aiming precisely but as the game gets more complex and you have more enemies you have this sort of tactical decisions of which targets to prioritize enemies that can deny your traversal pass and put things on traversal that make it so you either take damage and get knocked off or knock you off themselves it becomes sort of this kind of quasi platformer shooter all at once kind of rolled together which is a very insomniac thing i think who is this hero me not not me oh you! One thing I'm definitely a fan of in the game is the tone. Sunset Overdrive has a punky, colourful, anarchic vibe that, again, puts me in mind of Tony Hawk, or as James puts it, It's sort of a rock and roll if Iggy Pop was in the apocalypse, like, what would that, um, what would that look like? You know, it'd be the craziest three days of your life. He wouldn't last more than three days, but they'd be awesome and you'd have a good time. R doing what you want to do, dressing the way you want to dress, blowing stuff up, the humour is definitely very self-aware. We know this is a video game. We embrace the fact that we're a video game and we like breaking the fourth wall. If you like Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, like that same sort of thing happens in our game too. It's a f***ing video game. This extends to the character creator as well. You're given a bunch of options, all of which apply to both sexes, so if you want to make a bearded lady or a hench dude with pigtails, go right ahead. The customization options are going to be pretty robust as well. You know, we, it was really important. We wanted you to be able to play as male or female with different body types. Um, all the clothing's gender neutral. It all works on any size character. Facial yeah. hair on women. Yeah, yeah, facial hair for women, skirts for dudes, yeah. like whatever you want. Like we wanted you to express yourself, and there's no stats tied to any of it. So it's not like, oh, I have to wear this shoulder pads because it's the best shoulder pads in the game. It doesn't matter. Wear what you want to wear. Express yourself. How whatever you want looks to good. Yeah, what, what looks good to you. Yeah. It doesn't, even, you know, it's what you want to do. It like it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. But be yourself. It's full of fun touches, such as the respawn animations, which see your character being put back together from an airfix kit or stepping out of Bill and Ted's time travel phone booth to the fast travel system which involves your character passing out then waking up in a portable toilet next to where you want to be. However, I'm also worried that while the world the game takes place in is fun and colourful, it's going to be a hard job translating that into the missions you play. If everything revolves around combat, what's to stop it becoming endless base defence missions and fetch quests? According to Stevenson, however, once the game starts to open up, we can expect much more of a mix of mission types to keep things interesting. There's a lot of side missions and stuff. I mean, early on the game kind of pushes you through sort of the story to uh, 
introduce you to the world and also introduce you to a lot of the mechanics. But as you keep going, like all the side missions start opening up as you meet the factions. There's more quest givers to give you side missions. There's traversal and weapon and other challenges all throughout the city. So within an hour or two hours into the game, you start to have options to try and do other stuff. There's tons of collectibles. So you're always kind of given the option to continue the story and progress on that front. But there's so many other things you can do as well in the interim or even go online and play with friends. So that's where I'm at with Sunset Overdrive at the moment. I like the tone of the game, the environments and the weapons, but for this to be a game I really love, they need to nail that traversal and make sure there's enough interesting stuff for us to do when it comes out. What do you think? Are you looking forward to the game? Let us know in the comments below and like and subscribe for more on Sunset Overdrive from Outside Xbox. Thanks for watching.